fighting against the uh, application system test case, trying to get it to work with basic authentication. How will it go? Join us for the exciting conclusion in the rest of this episode. Uh, if you don't want to go through the, the process of uh, fighting through and troubleshooting the uh, system integration test for this, um, I, I typically I do these videos in one take style and include the mistakes in them so that you can struggle along and see me uh, troubleshoot them. But at the end of this video, I will be uh, kind of recapping, talking some more about basic auth and why you really wouldn't want to use it in your uh, in your project. And then we will be adding in some uh, going through kind of some final things, finishing up the guide itself. Uh, we will have a couple more episodes where we'll go through some of the other features in Rails, but um, this video here is the last one on the Getting Started Guide itself. So without further ado, let's get back to it. Right. Create. Create an article here. Create it, destroy it. There is a modal pop up there. And it is our block has zero articles and counting because none of them have a You can see our pluralization working, but um, I do not understand why this modal dialog must have changed page except confirm. Try match first and see that if that changes anything. See what happens if we take it away. So did not do anything. Let me just make sure it matches case sensitive. It does. to find what happens if I get to that point and just click on it. It's not working. Huh. I'm just going to try closing and reopening the terminal. It's 
still not working. Let's try. All right, I've got my Rails server up and running. going here, create a new article, authenticate, sign in. Right. And we're seeing the dialogue, it destroys. Try a Rails log clear and then try another test system. And we're still getting the failure. Maybe I've just got something stupid in the diff. So that just changed construct with HTTP off. It becomes article path instead of article URL. It's getting there. Yeah, I don't understand. All right, I'm going to comment out the basic auth section there and see if that is causing the problem directly. So articles controller. And then temporarily go in here. failing on destroying a comment. Thirty-seven, thirty-six. And it's working. Going to swap this, see if it's still working. So that is breaking my modal, the use of the Construct with HTTP off.
got this. We've got our articles. We've got our article. So that is that is breaking it. Let's see what happens in the server when I try to do that. Let's go to Chromium. Pull up the server. Started get article seven. No longer blank. So we've starting get on articles eight now. Done that once. And now the mobile is back. Yeah, so it's doing a get after I that is weird and that might be a a bug with the with something that's going on there Look at the network tab. Okay. Yeah, it's doing a get here instead of a delete. Only I destroy the comment. That dialogue is coming up. Well, let's see what's different between the two of them. So here, data turbo method delete turbo confirm. Are you sure? to destroy data turbo method delete turbo confirm are you sure so it seems like it's only worth changing url affects it
no, that's still, well, I'm, okay, so that's working. Let's see if that makes our system test case pass. Stranger things have happened. I think we That broke. Both of them somehow. Had it still had Chrome open. Oh, we are. So what am I going to do here? So let's see if our URI is changing here. So URI constructed the first time is stateless code at at the host and then the path and it's failing. Second time it's constructing pretty much the same thing. Which 
27. That's showing the sign in. I wonder if I can do a, maybe it's because it's trying to get to the comment path there. Maybe we need to do here. Oracle comments path. Index action couldn't be found. exact template so we can just return a status 204 No route matches.
explicitly do it with article ID. controller 8 Oracle Undefined method ID for nil class, even though I just had it in seven. Let's get rid of that option there. All right. Comments controller. Test. can't figure out a way to get this to work. It's working fine in Chromium.
and set the current session. Hold on. I think I somehow got everything to work. So that's passing. Let's take a look at our diff here. All right, so we're authenticating everything except for index. So we, we are authenticating for show, which is different than the spec that we had, but um, and we don't need the, the array now. Got that's still passing. We're setting article. We just um, move that, so that's the difference there. The Comments controller has similar authentication. Our articles controller test has that generate auth headers, and then we went in and added headers to everything that we needed authorized and um, added tests to make sure that they were not authorized if we didn't have the headers. Same thing comments controller, we added the unhappy path for uh, no authorization and added the header uh, for that. Our articles test, we are using that visit construct with HTTP off kind of um, to, to hack the, uh, the item there. And then our test helper, we had a generate auth headers item there. So let's take a look at articles test. We can get rid of our puts statement here and just return the, the string. This is so fragile that I'm gonna run the tests again. All right, so that seemed to have still worked. So we just essentially were able to replace the um, the visit um, just add before the visit article URL to to visit the version that does the uh, the authentication with the username and password, uh, and then uh, visiting the actual URL a second time makes it so that whatever weirdness is happening with Turbo and confirming um, is resolved. So we've got that. And I think we can just make some final comments on security uh, notes here. So other authentication methods are available for Rails applications. Two popular add-ons for Rails are Devise and AuthLogic, along with a number of others. I would definitely recommend using something other than basic auth in your application for one thing, what, the way we've got it right now, I mean, the, the, the password, username and password are hard coded into the controller, which we've opened, so we're, which we're going to open source. So it's 
not secure in that regard. Uh, you can see that we've got uh, HTTP to our local host. Uh, whenever you're doing any sort of user authentication at all, you need to make sure that you're using HTTPS and um, that you're using uh, TLS and that, that you're you're actually encrypting your uh, your credentials when you're doing this. If I were to do this in my own app, so I would have the uh, the credentials um, encrypted at rest in the database, encrypted in transit from the database to the application, and then encrypted in the application using HTTPS. Um, and I would probably have it in a user model with a um, with a UUID uh, based primary key instead of a um, instead of a just uh, incrementing integer uh, primary key so that it's harder for um, malicious people to just guess what the next user is and to try to uh, log in as them. The, um, and then there, there's a whole um, Ruby on Rails security guide. I would def definitely recommend uh, reading that if you were to go on and and um, actually build an app that you intend to take to production so that you can learn about some of the, the things you need to be on the lookout for. By default, Rails is uh, sets you up for success to write secure applications um, and um, the Rails security guide combined with some of the documentation for whether you use devise or auth logic or, or whatever else uh, will help you out. Um, or you could roll your own if you're um, interested in figuring out um, authentication and sessions and doing so securely, you could uh, roll your own. It would be a good um, experience for you. Um, again, probably not uh, something you want to do if you're dealing with um, sensitive financial data or something like that, that anything that you're doing um, w where you've got um, something that you could be liable for. I would uh, um, use one of the, um, the tried and true uh, Rails gems there. If you ever want to, um, to figure out what's available in the Ruby ecosystem, the um, Ruby Toolbox is an excellent solution for that. So you can go kind of by category and figure out what the um, the options you have for um, for, for whatever um, category you want to um, look at. So if it's um, authentication, let's say. user authentication, web authentication. So this is um, uh, for, for authentication once you've um, logged in. So pundit, can, can, can um, are kind of the leaders in that area. And then web authentication is what we're looking at more. So this is, uh, you can see devise is by far the most, um, uh, the most used of those tools that you've got available to you. Um, any other items there? So um, what's next? Uh, so you can, uh, we're, kind of getting to the, we've gotten to the bottom of the guide here. So uh, what's next in terms of this? So you can look at the, the Ruby on Rails guides. In addition to getting started with Rails, there are uh, a bunch on Active Record basics, um, things like if you want to find out about polymorphic associations or has many through or has and belongs to many, some of those many to many type uh, more so sophisticated um, relationships you can have between models. Um, you've got, or actually, 
that's active record associations would be um, where you would get that information. So active active record basics is more um, create, update, read, delete, um, kind of schema conventions and all those sorts of things. Uh, migrations, so more information about migrations, generating different kinds of migrations, um, the ability to write schema um, Things like self.up and self.down if you're um, going in that direction for, for something that might be otherwise irreversible. Um, validations, so all the things that you can do to validate your data before you save it into your database and your models. Um, their um, action view, layouts and rendering, helpers, form helpers, controllers, routing, uh, active support, some of the things like we did with the pluralize helper there, um, action mailer, mailbox, action text. Um, so you could you could spend quite a bit of time here going through the different things that are available to you. Um, we've got um, so th this would be a very good uh, place to continue your learning on Rails. Uh, before we wrap up this series, I am going to do a couple of uh, Rails 7 specific things. So we will have a couple more episodes of this series, but uh, we're, we're through the, the guide itself. And um, this has been a, uh, a bear on the trying to get the system tests working with the um, with the basic authentication. We will go in and add everything. Write our commit message. All right, so we've got our commit message here. Save it. Push to the remote. We'll start taking a look at some of the other features in the next episode. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.